hello to all my wonderful subscribers on YouTube. And it's been a very, very long time. A lot has changed, as you can see. I no longer live in Toronto. I'm in LA in my own one bedroom apartment. With all my esports stuff on my walls. I've got my um, all my event badges and my uh, Sempus interview in Game Informer up on the wall. I've got the Crave Boxer Zoo poster and uh, Smash Summit posters that I love so much and all this furniture that I bought and it's the first time in 17 years that uh, I have moved, period. Um, you know, it was just me and my mom in Toronto in a, in a two bedroom apartment for so, so long and me doing freelance for three years. But just like a good Nolan movie, we're gonna start from the end so that you guys understand what the fuck is happening right now and then uh, go back to the beginning and make our way back to where we are now. So what happens, what's happened today, today is July 14th. It is my last official day with Yahoo Esports. Um, last month today, Yahoo Esports closed its doors and now I am in LA, but not here as a full-time employee of Yahoo looking for work and figuring out what I'm going to do next. And uh, that's that's not a bad thing. So I just want to let that be known. This is going to be a mostly positive vlog. Everything that's happened in the past uh, eight or so months have, has been just a crazy, crazy ride. And um, I've developed so much as a person. And I really want to make this vlog because I feel like uh, when I was watching content and following all my favorite YouTubers, I didn't get a lot of insight into their life and I didn't get a lot of insight into the industry and, and esports. And I think a, a lot of the reason I watched was because I loved watching them grow and I loved figuring out how they did it and how they progressed and where their mind was at as things were going on. So I wanna give you guys a lot of that same insight. So we're gonna go all the way back to when Yahoo Esports approached me. I was doing a lot of freelance content um, and doing interviews with Boxer and getting sponsors for ourselves and going out to do interviews. And at those events, basically, Yahoo had sat in a couple of my interviews, had known who I was and approached me a couple of times and was like, we need a Counter-Strike guy. And so I, I kind of kept that in the back of my head. But I had remembered the first time I saw the Yahoo Esports has announced that they are making a website and doing esports content. I think I was in that Reddit thread and I just wrote like LOL or something like that because I thought, what a joke, you know? Another big corporation coming into esports um, no surprise here, but they're probably not going to go anywhere and they're going to fail. Um, and that was my, my first impression. And, uh, you know, someone with me who was like, who had kind of a big ego as a freelancer and was just completely grassroots and, and so on and so forth. And so I just didn't even entertain the thought of ever really taking that opportunity. But as time went on, I got some good advice from a lot of great people in, in our scene. Um, and they, they said, you know, Yahoo is just a, a really, it's a giant corporation. It's something that, uh, it's something, it's an experience you don't really want to turn down if you ever get the opportunity. Um, they they had so many, so many resources to offer me to, to get me to do all the ambitious thing uh, to help me um, create some of the content that was too ambitious for me to create as somebody who had limited funding, who was out in Toronto, away from everything, didn't have the connections or um, the just the ability to like fly to events whenever I wanted to or reach out to people because there was no one in my area. And and I think all those factors combined made me think, okay, maybe I should just, maybe I should give this a shot. And, um, and then I, I ended up accepting the job basically. So uh, the first thing that happened was in the winter. There was a kind of a, a period where I started to take Boxer very seriously, and we made play our first episode of Playburgers. Made that the Swags Crosshair placement video. That was an amazing, amazingly successful video. It was a video that showed me how to use my skills to create the best kind of content that I can create. In that, it's spe specific strategic analysis videos for Counter Strike, and I put all that into one. Uh, did basically a player profile for Swag and highlighted one of his um, his unique ability to have amazing crosshair placement and uh, I used my skills and analysis, my ability to explain things. I made that video and it was such a it was such a great hit. And Nathan showed how how um, how amazing of an editor he is. And if you guys don't know Nathan, he's at Boxer Nathan on Twitter. He has been in my stream since I had like four viewers, um, and so he just kind of really fell into my lap. Just this uh, amazing hardworking and talented 
editor that um, is doing content with me and is still with me. And I've seen him in real life multiple times now working at events and, and doing content. And he's even helped me at, at Yahoo to do play breakers. So uh, this is somebody that uh, is basically my other half when it comes to all the YouTube content. And he runs a channel and does thumbnails and stuff like that. So yeah, that's a guy you want to check out and um, a huge part of why I was able to uh, figure out how to find my place as a content creator and how to um, take advantage of what I was best at. So yeah, shout out to shout out to Nathan for sure. And um, and so after accepting my job offer at Yahoo, I had the problem of getting a visa. So normally I'm in Canada and so working in the US means I had to get a work visa of some sort and there's like a regular work visa that I could get. But um, this might be something for people to know. So I, I couldn't actually get that visa because I haven't finished university. So some of you know, I was a third year philosophy student at the University of Toronto before I decided um, that I wanted to go back to, uh, or that I wanted to make a YouTube channel and start creating content because I wasn't happy in school. I couldn't see a future in what I was doing. I wanted to teach, but I only wanted to teach philosophy. And I was thinking if I teach high school, I'm gonna have to get a second teachable and I, I didn't know what to do. So I decided to uh, just focus on what I enjoy doing. And that's how I've always lived my life. And I was like, you know what, fuck it. I've seen great YouTubers grow from just some dude in their room to, you know, making lots and lots of money doing exactly what they want to do. And I was like, I can do this. So I decided to do that. Um, but that meant that I wasn't able to get a regular visa. I actually had to get a special visa. It's an O1. Um, and it's it's a visa that I that to to get it I have to show that I've demonstrated extraordinary skills and accomplishments in my space and I use things like this uh, interview that I did with Semphis as you can see that's me and Semphis right there in that Game Informer article to build a case for myself to get this visa but it was a long arduous process I had to get all these reference letters and it was really a nightmare um, and ultimately I ended up getting the visa in around January um, with the help of Yahoo's lawyers who wrote the whole application for me and got it submitted and approved and all that and then I moved out here on in February I believe February or March I think it was March actually and just came here I made that last vlog explaining that I you know got hired at Yahoo and now uh, and then just started making content just right away and um, and right before I left had started taking everything very seriously at Boxer just to just to get more practice and, and really be able to hit the ground running here as well as uh, as well as have I always have in the back of my mind I want to have Boxer get somewhere or give me an idea of what I can go back to just in case anything like this happens where I'm out of a job. And I did think about that. And that's why I made the swag video. That's why I made the first play breakers. And, um, you know, that's something I took with me into Yahoo. Um, and from there created all types of great content that I'm, I'm super proud of. I'm so happy I had the opportunity to make it. Um, I got to, for the first time in my life, you know, work a real job where, well, I've worked tons of, I've been a, I've been a butcher, a telemarketer, I've worked at McDonald's, I've worked retail. I've done, I've done tons of jobs, but, this was the first kind of like salaried opportunity that I've had and never have worked for a big company or ever thought I would work for a company as big as Yahoo. But um, they've offered me just a tremendous opportunity. They gave me uh, a great team of people, super talented that all work in different esports. And um, I got to work with some of the best producers and editors and shooters available in our industry and got to work in a studio and learn how to how to read off a script on a teleprompter and make it seem kind of natural and develop so many great skills that I keep with me today, keep with me right now, you know? So moving forward, I, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to have worked at Yahoo. Um, in our time there, we made tons of very successful videos. And I guess a lot of you may be wondering, well, what's, you know, why did it end? If everything was going so well, I think, uh, I think the big question is, well, why did it, all come to an end and uh, I can say for sure that Yahoo Esports was uh, a legitimate site and a legitimate hub of esports for esports media content we were finally starting to get to the point as a, a startup 
with a bunch of people who are experienced but not experienced doing it all together uh, in creating something that was really great uh, for for esports and um, and uh, you know the long and short of it is I think I think people have the understanding that you know fuck Yahoo because they shut down Yahoo esports they don't know what's good for them and uh, you know or, or fuck Verizon or whatever but that's 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 all bullshit you know that's not what any of us think at all we are not burned by the experience whatsoever um, it was it was awesome and ultimately it, it just comes down to the fact that if you look at the the size of Verizon you know this is uh, this is like even compared to Yahoo just enormous in size and Yahoo esports is just this you know basically dot on the radar for a company at the scale of Verizon and so it's not a matter of oh Yahoo esports wasn't doing well it's that they are only considering projects of a much higher scale and that's that's the bottom line so people have put out theories and so on but it's it's mostly all wrong um, and uh you know, for us, we consider ourselves to have finally started to achieve success, and we learned so many things and got so many great things done that, uh, yeah, it was just a great thing that happened. So, and um, and coming out of it, leading up to today, they have taken care of us really well, and uh, I feel very well taken care of. I don't feel terrified of the fact that I, I live in LA now. I have to pay, you know, rent that is extremely high. I I am like kind of on my own. I just moved out here and so on. I, I feel very safe and um, I don't want you guys to worry about me or anything like that. Um, so more than the fact that I just had a great time, I also feel very well taken care of. And I have the ability now to not have to jump into another full-time opportunity and just so I can make some money. And you know I never want to be in that position. But what I did learn was that... Uh, with the volatility of our industry, there is, uh, there, there must always be the thought for anybody who gets a job in esports that you have to figure out what you, what your, what your long-term plan is, and also, if you're a personality like me, how do you, how do you fall back if you don't have a full-time opportunity or uh, job security? And, you know, I think fortunately for myself, I have taken my brand, my personal brand very seriously. The only downside is that my personal brand never got very, very big or big to the point that I wanted to. Um, but now with my, my newfound expertise and my, my skills and um, more of my content that has proven to be successful, I feel very, very confident that I can um, fall back on my brand. And that's why I'm now deciding to, uh, you know, if possible, continue to work as uh, continue from where I left off as a freelancer working on Boxer and not dedicating all my time to any one specific company and turning Boxer into the great organization that I know it can be. So that's where we're at today. Um, I last night recorded a video for a Patreon that I'm launching where I'm going to have uh, a lot of my personal services on the Patreon that I can provide to people to hopefully contribute and, and in return get something back that's valuable that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, specifically, something like a demo demo reviews is something that I did a lot of. Um, I have I have so many great memories of people at events coming up to me. Like I remember Vuick Vuick. If you if you're watching this vlog, I think I met him at the MLG major, and I did his demo review when he was silver three. And he came up to me at the MLG major, and he's like, "I'm global now." And like, nothing fucking feels better than that. You know, that's that's such a sick thing. Um, I get the same feeling from. I was at DreamHack Austin. I remember, I uh, a kid came up to me, and sorry, I don't remember his name, but he came up to me and he said that um, three years ago he watched my B Hop tutorial video and learned how to B Hop, and now he has a record on a B Hop server, like a. A top global time and you know nothing feels better than that now that's why I started making videos is to help people um, newer players get better at the game and that might be you know being a being a teacher and wanting to help people learn to do stuff might come from a place of selfishness where I get like some sick pleasure in knowing that like I have contributed to someone's success 
but that might be a whole different topic um at the end of the day i think it's still that thing inside me that has caused me to want to teach people and help people and stuff is has had a really positive impact on both people i've helped and also myself and just helped me find myself um and made me feel like i am doing what i was kind of set out to do and um i think one of my goals in life is to is to do what i'm what i'm best at or find what i'm best at and then do that and i think with youtube and with creating content and all my time at yahoo and all this stuff has coalesced into this moment where i feel like i'm really truly prepared to take on that challenge and push myself and figure out how to you know uh, fully take advantage of the skills that i have and create like the content that i want to make and, and be um be the best at what i do and at the at this very moment that is creating specific strategic analysis videos for players to help learn and understand Counter-Strike. And um, until that changes, that's that's what, what I want to do right now. But um, in this past month, we... <laughs> so, oh yeah, so another thing was I, um, you know, when it was all, when it was, when it was kind of ending with us in Yahoo um, and, you know, the, the merger was, was coming and we all, kind of got the inkling that this might this might come to an end I had decided to um, apply for a green card so now I'm in the green card process so I can have dual citizenship so that I can live here and I think I could I could go back to Toronto Um, I could go back to Toronto I could probably spend half the money that I'm spending on rent here and be able to have a place that might even be nicer but And it's not that I don't want to go back to Toronto. I really miss my friends. I love the city. I was super hesitant to leave in the first place. And I, you know, I'm happy to be out here in California, but at the same time, you know, I definitely left a lot behind when I picked up my life and moved out here. But um, there's something about the thought of moving back or moving back too soon that just feels like I can't do it. I'm I'm not done yet, you know. I only spent three months or so making content at Yahoo and I was just getting started. I had, if anything, another great thing about Yahoo was that it just it sparked so much ambition in me to to because they gave me the freedom. They said, you know, if you want to take time to do a project that takes a month or two, you can do that. You, know, you can do your videos every week. We didn't have a quota. They were like, do whatever you want, you know. And that was that was all, that was amazing. And I'm really thankful for that. Um, but uh, you know, I have. I have ambitions to do, to do studio, to do uh, podcasts in the studio, to do, uh, you know, documentaries about Counter Strike that we don't have anywhere else to do, um, to do merchandising um, that I wasn't able to focus on when I was at Yahoo. And merchandising is a huge pastime of mine, and it seems kind of out of left field since I've been talking about content. But that's something that's I, I really want to take on seriously as well, and. Um, and I really want to accomplish that while I'm here. And the other great thing about being in LA um, is that there are a lot of team houses around here and there's a lot of access. Um, the f- fact is if I get a dual citizenship and I'm able to stay, uh, then I won't have to, uh, then I won't have to get like visas to work in the States, for example. Um, and, uh, and the other reason that I applied for green card status was so that I could have the ability to um, live and work here without having to go full time somewhere else. So I won't lie, it was pretty expensive and it was a huge risk and we didn't really know it was gonna happen. And so these past couple months have been absolutely crazy, but I've never lived my own life like a bitch. Like I've always just done exactly what I wanted to do and fucking not even hoped it worked. Like I just know it would work if I just did it. And it's been that way so far. It's looking like it's going to continue to be that way. And I'm pretty much just wondering where I'm going to be in three years. But I'm not. I'm not scared of it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for it. And um, I guess yeah. The f- the first step is the to see if the Patreon is successful. Um, to I've been talked to by a bunch of companies. Pretty much every content creator company in the space has reached out to me at some point or another after uh, Yahoo's birth shut down 
to make Counter-Strike content. And uh, it's been a lot of great offers, and a lot of great companies that I wouldn't mind working for. But um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to really focus my attention on Boxer and get some of these projects done and do them by myself, have them go up on our YouTube channel, and finally hit that 100K. You know, that was like the first thing I wanted when I started my channel three, three or four years ago. And we haven't done that yet. So that's going to be goal number one. Uh, goal number two is just being able to stay here and uh, live and work on my own terms and do all the great content I want to do and hopefully work with some good companies that can help get our videos seen and, and make sure that we're funded enough that we can have them look good and work with more great people and, and get that time with players to find out all that um, real specific information that I think is missing from Counter-Strike content about what players are thinking um, when they're when they're in matches and uh, and yeah so it's a very hopeful time it's I think for most people it would be scary because I am out of work I am here I am not a citizen I am um, I don't know what I'm doing next but hopefully with your guys support and you know and just the support that you've already given me because that's held me up you know that's that's given me hope the fact that I can sit here now and make this vlog is all because of the fact that I have a great community behind me. So um, you guys, you know, are half of me. You know, you guys are half of me. You guys are my backbone. And that's not going to change. But uh, but yeah, um, any contributions to you make to the, that you might make to the Patreon, uh, hopefully the rewards and goals appeal to you and... Um, incentivize you to uh, contribute to them if you want me to change anything or you feel like things there's something that I could uh, add to it that you would be interested that you know that I could offer you as a service that you think is not on there just hit me up make sure to hit me up on Twitter for everything um, I think one thing is true is that Twitter is the best way to contact me directly at any time in any part of my life YouTube is something I have to go on and do and it's something that you know if I'm doing Yahoo making a vlog every day isn't going to be possible but I'll always be on Twitter so um, make sure you reach out to me there uh, make sure to check out the Patreon thank you for taking a look at it and uh, look forward to a lot more YouTube content and hopefully uh, a successful end to um, a successful start to this next chapter of my life uh, thank you guys so much for being a part of it I really appreciate it and I'm very hopeful for the future <laughs>